Hello. How are you? Happy Wednesday. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs> How's it going, you guys? I am, uh, I was furiously trying to get re like ready all the masks I finally finished to hand off. Hi, Melin. Hi, Claire. So I didn't get another scout cut out, but we can talk at the end if maybe you want to wait for me to do that, how we're feeling and stuff like that. So, but I definitely need some more short sleeve tops in my wardrobe and I just don't always want to wear knit too. Hi, Joan. How's it going? Hi, Lynette. Hello. <laughs> how are you guys? Hi, Eva. <laughs> so today we're making the scout tea. I don't even have a picture of it here. Sorry. You know, because it was a PDF pattern, I don't have the little thingy with me. Hi, Sherry. Yay, you made it to the start. <laughs> I know totally what you mean. <laughs> I love it when I make it to a streamer start. So you guys are lucky. I'll make it to a streamer start and it'll say, there's a countdown on the screen and it says live in 20 minutes and it's counting down. And I'm like, oh my gosh, 20 minutes. <laughs> it's crazy. I feel like if I did that, there'd be mutiny. I had a local friend even say, um, yeah, I didn't watch because like it was just on this screen at the beginning and nothing was happening. And I was like, yeah, you didn't watch live. You got to fast forward past that. <laughs> That's why I changed my thumbnail to say, um, you know, if this isn't live, fast forward. So, so what have you guys been working on? Anything besides masks or are you working on masks? I know, I know Malin's making like, um, like protective gowns that is so interesting Malin and there's the like knit cuffs I saw did they provide that fabric to you hi Terry how's it going Terry I finally got on Facebook the struggle I got on there a couple times and I was like where is it where people ask to get into this group I couldn't find it for once so I'm really sorry I'm just lame about that stuff this is the thing about doing live streaming. People think, I think a lot of people think I'm the most social extroverted person to be able to do this. And I think a lot of people are turned off by video, especially companies that I do their stuff for. I think they're like, oh, attention person. That person just wants attention. They don't realize that I'm really not like that. And a lot of streamers aren't like that. It's just a really, um, a space I can feel kind of comfortable in sharing. So Hi, Sydney. Hi, Lynn. The production has started. That's awesome, Melin. Good job. That looks like a project. Oh, yeah, Joan. Awesome. Yeah, so you're doing the distance teaching. Oof, that must be a lot of new hoops to jump through. Ooh, Terry. Terry, those sound like projects for you, and I know you usually sew for others, so... Awesome. I just realized like the whole me made may thing is right around the corner and I was going to talk to you guys about that. Oh, and I got those, um, markers that Nancy's always raving about. I got some in, so I'm going to try these. I really love the Choco liner. Like I love the way that draws on fabric and everything, but you know, the yellow is staying there. Maybe I just need to switch to a different color. You know, hi Karen. How's it going? All right, so shall we sew? I actually have some gray thread on my uh, machine right now, and I think it's actually perfect because it's kind of a grayish, bluish chambray, you know? So I have the, the back is going to have a bunch of, um, or a bunch, two uh, waist starts. Now, most likely, y'all don't need these changes on the Scout. It's not their fault. It's me, you know? Like, we're all unique, so... I added this bust start here, and then um, my armhole is a little bit deeper, and my sleeve is a little fuller than the pattern. Those are the only things I prefer. And then here's our little bias strip. This looks so fragile. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so um, let me set up a couple things here and um, get ready to go. I really want to cut the this shirt out a couple more times and sew it. Do you hear my iron? It's like doing something funny. Let me I feel like I overfilled it 
I really thought it was empty and I overfilled it while right before the stream and now it keeps like talking to me. So I didn't, Sydney. I think a color block version I would probably cut out with you guys because I think that would be really fun to show like 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 to pick where we want the seams and stuff because it's your you have like infinite options, right? So if if there's time at the end and we're up for it, um so I think this will sew together pretty quickly. I am gonna do French seams as well. Um, I think I might see how we feel. Maybe cut one out just a, just a like straight up um, one with no dart on the bias. Why not, right? In like a cotton, quilty cotton, you know, like something that you normally wouldn't make a top out of. So, okay. So here is the back. You can kind of tell the difference between the embroidery. You're gonna, probably not gonna be able to see it but I can see the difference of the, see this one looks a little fatter, it's a little more detailed. It is actually pretty obvious when I do this back and forth, you know? Yeah, Sherry, mine's not low. It's mad because I added too much, I guess. I don't know, you know? Oh man, you guys, the production sewing is not good for my body anymore. I just can't sit like that anymore. I'm just like, Oh, you know what? I forgot that I hadn't, um, you guys saw me notch the darts, right? Like you saw me notch it, but they're not notched. So let me get my pattern. Sorry. I forgot about that. What does my pattern look like? I can't remember. Let's see. Here we go. No, that's not it. Maybe I'll turn it off. All right, do you guys hear it? Why is it doing that? I just turned it off and now it's madder. Love having new issues, love it. All right, um, let's fold this together. I even see that I notched it. I can see my little, oh, there it is right there. Okay, so I just didn't do, I just didn't do both sides, that's all. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I turned it off, it's quieting down now. Maybe it didn't like that water. So my, um, I have like a water dispenser here at work. It was like one of the things I brought here that Ryan and I used to have, we used to have like a drinking water dispenser and it dispensed hot and cold water. You know what I'm talking about, the big water bottle. And um, here in this office, I don't have a sink. There's a bathroom, but um, I don't have really access to the kitchen, you know? So um, I've kept that thing, it's been really great. And it's like my hot water and my cold water and you know, I just bring my dishes home and wash them and I fill my iron and get water all day. Well, I ran out yesterday and I was like, oh no. I hope I can get water for it. So I brought like disinfectant wipes and wore my mask. I brought my only the credit card because it's a machine that uses a credit card now, which is so much easier than finding change. And I thought, oh, this will be cleaner. And I got there, I got it all like disinfected. You know, I'm trying to do my part. I put my bottle in there and the machine's unplugged. <laughs> like it's not even working. So I was like, oh, okay, that's a bummer. So uh, I had to buy a bottle of water um, which I never do. I'm going to change my needle, actually. I sewed 180 masks yesterday um, and changed my needle a few times, but I have a heavier weight needle on that I want for this. So I'm going to change to a 14. I think that's the smallest I can go on my machine right now. Oh, really, Beverly? Yeah, maybe it needs, just needs to be cleaned. Maybe. It did that right as I overfilled it. It started doing it right after that, so pretty sure that's what it is. Let's turn it back on now. It was probably, because they, they, they say don't overfill it, you know? All right. So I'm so pleased I'm done with all my masks. Um, definitely running, ran out of fabric almost. Hi, Serena, how's it going? <laughs> I just got you confused with Beverly when I heard saw what you said earlier. So I didn't say hi. Alright. Oh, and I uploaded a new video. Finally. I think I've been talking about doing that one for a year. Um, 
So on how to print PDF patterns, and it talks about also printing at home PDF patterns. And I showed you how to order from three different printing websites. So let me know how that goes and how, how, how you guys find the information. So, all right, so we're gonna do the darts here. Maybe I'll try that uh, nifty little method um, of sewing back on my, oh, I don't know if I can do that. This fabric is really lightweight. I already feel like I'm gonna have to wear something underneath it, you know? I don't really like that when that happens. Does that sound weird? Hmm. That sounds really weird to me. I didn't get that folded very well, did I? All right, I'm just gonna pull it out and I'm gonna hand tie my darts. <clears throat> I don't backstitch, but um, Brooke sent me this nifty little trick where someone goes to the end, turns it back around, and then sews down into the dart and does their backstitch so they don't have to hand tie them. I tried that, it's actually pretty nice. Oh, nice, Terry. Did you tell them that? <laughs> Ray, how's it going? How are you? Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Serena. Okay. I'm not going to do the back stitch because I feel like if I have to remove anything, this fabric is not going to survive very well, like removing stitches. Um, and also, um, I don't want it to be bulky right there. So yeah, I wish I didn't have this wrinkle on this fabric here. Has anyone else made the scout? Oh, so over does that too? That's cool. Yeah, I don't even know if I've ever seen that before. Um, I think it's great if you're like, I know this dart's gonna be good, you know? Uh, but if you were at all like, okay, I may need to reposition it. I wouldn't do it. But I think it's I think it's great. Oh, come on, catch that. There we go. There we go. So um, I think my zip double is ready for testing. I just I just literally haven't had time to make sure all of it is in a nice tidy little package for the testers and give it to the gal who's gonna handle the testing again. Cause I was doing the masks and um, uh, what else was I doing? A lot. <laughs> and, um, uh, and then I need to get another pattern off to the gal, which is almost done. I already recorded the video, but I'm gonna focus on the bag you guys designed. So that's the thing I'm gonna prioritize right now um, and get that done. I already feel lame that we never finished the bodice thing. So, you know, I wanna follow through on that. I'm gonna sew all my darts and then um, we'll iron them. It's nice and quiet now. All right, so here we go. I added these back waist darts because um, if you saw the cutting video, you now know the struggle I have with fitting my backside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin this right there. And my dart kind of ended right here at the hem. So that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna try and, let's see if this lines up. Just like that. It's a really lightweight fabric, but it's so cute. Oh, I love threading my needle on camera. Love it. I have the door open. Is that gonna bug you guys? The weather's supposed to be 80 degrees here today. Bye, Joan. Thanks for stopping by and saying hi. 
Oh, that would be cute, Sherry. You need gardening, cooking instead of sewing. That's nice, though. You know. Hi, Angela. How's it going? <laughs> All right. Right through this. Pivot at my knee, my pin. I think it just sounds different because it's not masks. Let's see, I got, I finished devs. I almost finished an audio book. And then I started a light show called Zoe and the Playlist. Zoe, and so there's lots of singing and dancing that, which is kind of cute. What, Serena, no what? What did I ask? Oh, you haven't made the scout, I bet. Is that what I asked? All right, so here's my other one. Let's fold this along here. So in general, when you're putting in darts, um, like the pattern, when you're trying to design them, this drill and this drill, they should stack on top of each other if you got it right with the grain line and all that. It's pretty easy to fudge it a little bit, um, but if it's a lot off and you have a little bit of like, like it, like it folds funny. I can't really describe it other than that that it's gonna if it's not quite on grain or drafted correctly, you'll have some weird torquing going on. Um, you might want to like take a second and look at it and and maybe base the dart in and see if it's gonna be okay because sometimes it's really hard to beat those darts into submission. I, I'm sure you've run across them. Even in like big pattern companies, they'll make that mistake. Ooh, I don't think I got this dart very good. Like sewing wise, I think I got a little narrow there. And that can be lots of things. It could be that you cut your fabric off grain. It could be that you marked it a little bit off. It could be both, even a little bit of each, you know, so. Door open. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I know, Angela. Me too. I need some short sleeve shirts. I have lots of archers and long sleeves. I have lots of tank top, like willows. Um, I need some in between that aren't dresses. Yeah, it was kind of cute. It got, the second one is actually kind of cuter. I didn't realize it was going to be that much singing and dancing. You know, I don't mind that though. Right, Sydney? Exactly. All right, I'm going to iron these darts here. And then we can do our side seams and stuff. Where's my dart? Iron. Why is my iron way down there? I swear I moved it. See, there's still a little water over here. All right. I love how light this feels. I wonder if they still have this fabric. Did you guys see that? Um, that lined up perfectly. Before. Wait, does it go up? No, 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 it goes down. Look at that. What is that? I swear that lined up perfectly. Um, did you see that Needle Sharp added these like um, stay at home and sew boxes? Oh, that was kind of cute. I did, the, and she has a couple things that I've actually made in the fabric. I actually browsed them. I was, I was going to buy one and then I, none of them <laughs> ended up working for me. But um, that'd be a great way to try out her subscription thingy. She has that dress I really want to do, the clover dress. But it's funnily, I bought the yellow fabric she has it in the box with. I bought some of that yellow fabric for my daughter because she loves yellow so much. I don't think she's going to go for it now, but I'm trying to decide if yellow works on me. <laughs> that looks okay, huh? Look at That's pretty darn good. All right. I got this fabric from um, Hearts Fabric. What, where are we go? Here we go. Here 
<laughs> I swear that's what it is, Sydney. It's like, oh, okay, I'm not going through. Because I think you're sewing them. Um, I think I've seen your mask. You're sewing them similar to me, right? You're like hemming over the pleated edge, which is kind of a weird thing to do. And I'm I'm sewing like binding to that edge. So it is a little bit to go through. <laughs> I got this at Hearts Fabric like last summer. And it just looked like they have a lot of fabrics that um, I don't notice on their website. I don't know if this one is one of them. And um, they have a lot of fabrics that are like this. They're very fashion oriented. It's probably, oh wait, I want to do this French seam. So I'm going to do this uh, right side, wrong sides together. Wrong sides together. And it looked a little neglected, you know. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, I'm going to do a Cheyenne tunic out of that. And here I am not doing that. And mainly I didn't because you saw what I had to do to that Cheyenne tunic to make it look better on me. And that's why I hadn't cut and sewn it out of this fabric. I was kind of shy about it because I love that tunic, but it just fits me funny. And um, I haven't modified that pattern yet to fit my, my whatever, tilting hips, sway back, hump, shoulder, busty self. <laughs> oh, that's cool, Karen. Yeah, I do love patterns with binding. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it doesn't add, like adding the elastic. Yeah, sometimes elastic is kind of finicky with a machine. I know, it might be though, Sherry, I don't know. I've never looked for it, so I can't really, I can't really say. And you know, it's been since last summer, so it could be gone, you know? I'm gonna do my side seams too. I don't know why I just undid my whole shirt. There we go. So we'll do wrong sides together here. I'm doing French seams because um, I think that'd be really nice in this shirt. It'll give it a little bit of structure because it's so lightweight and um, when you're using these kind of nicer fashion fabrics, it's kind of nice not to use a serger if you don't, you know, have to. Let's see, make sure that dart is laying okay because I've got a little wing there. I wonder how this matches up on the side. I did okay. Maybe when the seam allowance is taking up, it'll look more seamless. Look at that right there. I'm going to pull this right here. That's too close. I didn't quite catch it. So, um, did I tell you guys I'm taking a, I took an illustrator class, um, like a virtual one. Do you guys know who Sarah Watts is? She's a fabric designer. I really like her stuff. The laptop stream is a second and a half. I know, that's so funny how that happens. You can try refreshing it. I won't say anything you're going to miss. <laughs> I know, I have, I do that too. Like my phone will be faster than my laptop often on Twitch too. Twitch is like, there's hardly any delay. Um, so I decided, yeah, I, I saw that she was gonna offer a Illustrator class that you download and, and do at your pace. And then she had a Zoom, I didn't even know she was gonna have this, but she had a, then a question and answer live Zoom session. And then she kind of put it in increments of people so that you could have a lot of one-on-one -on -one with her. And um, it was so fun. Like I actually learned a lot in the class and she's, I like the way she uses it. It was how to design a quilt. Like, so using Illustrator design quilts, which I'm not gonna do. But a lot of those tools are really cool. But it, I've been kind of thinking about um, get offering like I don't know what I would call it consults or one-on-ones or maybe like a few on one sewing lessons and her her um little way of doing it is actually pretty clever I'm wondering if I can do picture in picture on zoom so that you can see me and my machine you know so then when I do that one-on-one -on -one, people can I can show them 
you know? That'd be so cool. Hi, Ramona. Yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, so Sarah Watts is a fabric designer, and she was uh, the original, one of the originals for Cotton and Steel. Um, and then they broke off and did, they are Ruby Star Society now. Um, I used a ton of cotton and steel fabric at Chicken Boots, like a ton. Like so much so that I know that I was putting a little bit of a dent in their thing. Like I was buying everything they had at one point. And um, uh, yeah, so anyway, but she does print stuff. Um, she did um, that. I finally got to hang behind me. Can you see that? My sewing room um, thing um, that Ran gave me. All right, so let's see. And um, I just really like her aesthetic and stuff, and she's got a pretty good attitude. You know, she's really, she's got a great attitude, honestly. And um, uh, I don't know, I just thought, okay, maybe she'll touch on like fabric design. I don't want to become a fabric designer, but I kind of like learning those techniques. And I find it really interesting, and I kind of want to make sure I understand how to use Illustrator for doing pattern stuff since I don't have a CAD program. So it was kind of, it was really cool, you know. It, it was kind of a cool thing. And she's still doing those, and now she's going to do Procreate. And they're like, it was like $25, you know. So I was like, that's a steal, one-on-one -on -one with her. She's been using that program for 15 years. She knows it so thoroughly, and she's really experimental. So it was pretty exciting, pretty inspiring. All right, I'm going to iron this. Um, can I move this up here? Oh, yeah, I can. Perfect. All right. Let's go there. All right, done. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to kind of offset these side seams from one another so that I can just press the seam allowance one direction. I'll pull it apart there. I already trimmed it. I'm always worried when I um, iron these kinds of fabrics with decorative stitching, like the fat, the stitching will be like polyester and it'll melt, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would be so bad. And I don't know like how, how that price compared to um, other classes, but I'm gonna look into it. I think it would be really fun. I would love to help people one on one. I would love to learn what they need the most help on. You know? All right, so I'm gonna turn this right side out. Or I mean, inside out. I just panicked. Just I was like, wait, that's not right side out. All right, let's iron it on this edge here. Just look at that nice flat seam. What's this right here? We'll just leave that little thread there. And it was also fun to like meet other people in the Zoom. I didn't get really to chat with them, but kind of cool to see other crafty peeps out there learning something similar they were oh, i think all quilt based but um that is a pretty cool world all right i will answer whatever you guys are saying in chat in a second i need to move my chat to the right side of my computer so i can see it Being really gentle. Try not to pull too much. Okay, we'll do the shoulders real quick and then we can sew our seams and then we'll be onto the sleeves. Woohoo! And yes, we're going to be studying in a sleeve using a French seam. I love living on the edge like that. Hardly. <laughs> yes, 
Yeah, Sherry. I know there is a lot of work that goes into that. It's not something exactly. I don't want to do that because. Um, I don't want to spend that much time in front of a computer. I spend so much time in front of a computer already, surprisingly, just to run this whole thing that I don't really want to add to that. Um, but I like doing it for small, little small projects, and I find it fascinating. I've always found graphic stuff kind of interesting, you know? So um, that's kind of why I did it. And I have Procreate on my iPad. I bought my iPad so that I could have the pencil, like it was a full on splurge. I did, I did, I needed a new iPad, but I didn't need to do that kind of iPad. And I had just made a ton of money at a show and I finally wanted to treat myself to something, which I treat myself, but not like that all very often. And um, Procreate is one of those, it's only a $10 app. I mean, I know that sounds expensive for an app, but if you consider that illustrators like $250 a year and procreates $10 once, that's a steal. So it kind of makes the, the extra expense of the iPad, like getting a nicer one and having the pencil still cheaper than getting illustrator for a year. So, you know, that was kind of cool. And it's a really interesting program and I love, like sometimes you'll see Sarah post on Instagram and you see a video of her doing it because it records how you do it, it's so cool. So maybe you'll see something like that from me sometime. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, cool, Ramona. Yeah, I know it's it's kind of it's there are those border fabrics out there, but not as often as we probably all would like, right? Um, I mean, I see them in quilting cottons, but I I wouldn't use this top for a quilting cotton unless I did it on the bias. And then your border wouldn't be on the border anymore, you know? So th it is pretty lucky that they have this really sweet fabric there. I thought it would be really nice in the Cheyenne tunic, kind of a boho blouse type of thing. All right, so there's our seams. Maybe I could do the, um, I feel like I just did kind of a bigger seam allowance than I should have. Um, maybe I could do one-on-one -on -one Zoom things with all Patreon subscribers. That would be kind of cool. Once a month or something, we can have a Ask Sarah Me session. <laughs> Let's see how I did. I did those a little bit bigger than I probably should have, but hopefully it's because I won't I won't have any threads showing. Oh, I'm so itchy all of a sudden. This is the back. This is the side. It's not too bad. Look at that matching right there. I didn't even pay attention to that. I probably could have and maybe gotten a little better right there. But, you know, when you just look at it, it probably won't be very noticeable. I was like, ooh, I did good there. That's a dart. Never mind. <laughs> Let's see how I did on this one. Where's the other side seam? Wait, did I just miss it? Oh, it's, it's off the same amount. So remember when I was trying to match where the front and back were lining up on the side seam? Um, I was pretty focused on that. But, you know, one thing I was doing wrong, I wasn't thinking of where the seam line was. And it's only a half inch, but half inch in this design makes that slope a lot more drastic, so. I'm going to, I am going to start my new piece of embroidery. How about that? Nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you really could, I thought about making um, that, you know that, um, the Mexican top I wore the other day, it would be really fun to do something like that in embroider. I don't like embroidery, but you know. Okay, so let's do the sleeves. We have a left and a right. So this is our front and this is the right side. So let's put this together.
Wait, this is the right side. Yeah, okay. So put wrong sides together. It only has a half inch seam allowance, so I've got to be really a little more respectful of that, you know? Oh no, <laughs> it's going to, uh, it's rained in there, nice. <laughs> this is a pretty short seam, so maybe I would just finger press it you know, to do my other French seam. But let's trim it. Let's actually look at it. Because this little underarm portion is a little bit on the bias, you can see there's no fraying on that edge. So here's, the, I can see the grain line. It's right here. So that edge, because it's on the diagonal, there's absolutely no fraying on it. Kind of convenient, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Ray, right, right? Me too. No handwork. But I think you can, you know, find some interesting fabrics to splice together, you know? Like, you find something embroidered and you just use it as the yoke of the top, you know? I think that's doable. I didn't bring uh, I didn't bring bottoms today, so I can't really model this afterward. God, I'm wearing a dress. Okay, I'm just finger pressing this because it's so small. I'm just kind of scratching it with my fingernail, to be honest, and then pressing it again. The fabric is super fine, really thin. Makes it a little easier. All right. All right, so now we're gonna put in our uh, set-in sleeves with a French seam as well. And I'm gonna put a um, stay stitch or gather stitch, whatever you wanna call it, around the cap here so that I can kind of pull it in. It's probably going to be either easier or harder with this really lightweight fabric, you know? Oh, cool. Do you like that backpack, Angela? I like that one. The making one. It's a fun pattern. It's so versatile. So simple and so versatile. All right. So let's see. I'm, I'm going to actually make my stitch length the same. And kind of looking, my notches didn't get on this side, but they are here, there's one here. So I'm just gonna go notch to notch basically, just inside the seam line, the, the seam allowance. Sometimes just the very act of putting in your stay stitch gathers it enough. That's not a good thing in, for your machine, but it is handy. <laughs> I wanna have your machine checked out if it does that. <laughs> Did you make one, Angela? I've made, I think I've made like four of that bag now. I like her patterns a lot. I'm acting all delicate, aren't I? It's kind of funny, it's probably funny to see me. I'm usually a bowl in a china shop. so hard not to just press down on my heels and then it cut the thread. All right, so um, just gonna pull this thread here. If I remember right, I actually have a lot of ease in this thing and it is a little bit tricky to get it all in there. I add the max. Uh, there's more than there, uh, I have more ease on the cap of this than there is in the actual pattern. So if you didn't, add any ease to yours is going to be a lot easier to put in especially with the french seam it'll be easier than mine probably will be right now you're about to watch me probably struggle a little bit to get it all in there but i know that's your favorite kind of entertainment so you're still working up the courage that that backpack is really great to do um if you're nervous about any of it you can totally do it in like little increments like you could 
do the back the outer pocket and then attach it to the front and then put the handle you know like and you have like your front and you have your back and you have your inner with the pocket um, you can really do that in nice little chunks to kind of get through it without it being too too overwhelming I think it's because it's all flat until that very last step when you bind it So I'm just gathering this just enough to get that ruffle edge there. So there's no actual gathers in there. I'll get rid of them if there are. I just keep that kind of ruffled edge and that should be enough. And I always pull when I'm doing this, I always pull from the same side of the piece, the sleeve. So don't pull from the top on one end and then from the underside on the other, because then they'll lock up and you'll have a little bit of a trouble, a little bit of trouble getting them sorted. It's not the end of the world if you do that on a sleeve because you're just talking about reducing the fullness of the sleeve. But if you're doing that on say a gathered skirt, especially if you have two rows of gathers and you accidentally are only pulling one and then you pull the bobbin on the other and then they lock up, it's really kind of a mess then, you know? Um, if you haven't cut the sleeve out yet, Karen, what I would do is, um, slash from the cap down to the hemline. Like say here is the hemline right here. I would slash to that hemline and then slash up to that hemline, hemline from the bottom and then overlap it. And I would actually do it um, even. If you're only getting rid of like a quarter of an inch, you can do it right down the center. But if you're, you're trying to get rid of maybe three quarters of an inch, I would actually do it maybe in two spots, like the front of the sleeve and the back of the sleeve, and just overlap it three eighths of an inch on each side and then blend your curve back in. I wouldn't want you to lose the height here because you kind of need that unless you're finding that maybe trying to think of a scenario. I mean, there's reasons to shave off your cap, but what happens is then your sleeve does, you know, it, it like is shorter, right? So I, what I would do is um, if you're wearing like a, a shirt right now that has a sleeve armhole seam in there, just pinch out what you're thinking about shaving off the cap and see what happens to your sleeve. It's like basically like you're darting the sleeve, you know, and it kind of raises the bottom up and that's kind of, Sometimes not the effect you want, but if that's the effect you want, then yeah, you can do that. It's probably not going to reduce the amount of ease that you have to sew into the sleeve though, um, as much as you think without slashing and, and overlapping. Cause that kind of keeps this little sleeve cap intact, which you kind of need. You need this right here to go over the gush of your arm, you know, <laughs> at least I do. I have a lot of gush in my arm. All right. So here we are. Um, this one, here's my front. I like to just lay my sleeves out. Here's my front of my sleeve right there. And there's my underarm. So this is my left sleeve right there. And this is my right sleeve. So we'll just set this guy aside here and we're going to do it uh, wrong sides together first. I'm going to flip this out and put it inside my shirt here. Um, the fabric's so lightweight that I'm actually gonna push the seam allowances the same direction for once. Generally, if your fabric is a little bit thicker right here, you might wanna reduce the bulk and put your seams uh, away from each other. Actually, I'm going to do that. It's still nicer. It's just nicer, you know? It's a short sleeve, so I'll push the sleeve. I keep the body being pressed the correct way, which I actually don't have it pressed the correct way. There we go. Now I have it pressed the correct way. I always push my seams towards the back and I have the sleeve seam, seam pressed towards the front and it's just to reduce the bulk right there. Let's get the pins out. Let's see where we're at. Let's see how hard this is going to be. I was pinned on the underarm and then I'm going to find my notch at the top right there and that goes to the shoulder. I should have probably pressed my seams. 
Oh God, these quilting pins. So Loki, my pug, walked on my glasses and and it like, it like smushed them somehow. And my glasses are holding on by like a thread right now. <laughs> so now one side is like barely on me. They keep sliding down. All right, so let's see how what we got here. So look at that. I still have quite a bit to kind of ease in there. I know that would probably make some of you cry, but um, like I said, I have a lot of ease in my sleeve. And if you're wondering which one's the one I was pulling, you know, it's usually the longer one because you cut those threads at the same time, right? So this longer one's not much longer, but that's the one that I keep pulling on. Pull a little bit. And I would just kind of now start distributing front to back. Now remember your first seam of your um, your sleeve when it's a French seam isn't isn't going to be on the, the seam line so it is a little bit trickier you're gonna get wrinkles in it but that's okay that's not gonna show it's not gonna be in the final seam you want most of the easing across the top calf of your sleeve up at the top it's really easy to put it down here, but you don't need it down there. It'll fit funny if you do that. All right, so I like to do a little bit of mine on the fly once I get it kind of close. I'm gonna hang my shirt, there we go. So I know that this section here, the easiest part to ease, unfortunately, I don't get to put any of that fullness there. So I just keep it nice and relaxed and um, pin it there so that I don't accidentally put any down there. And usually it's the spot between the underarm and the um, notches of the sleeve. All of the ease is usually done between the notches across the cap at the top when they're drafting the pattern. So like I said, I'm doing a French seam here. So I'm just gonna do, this is wrong sides together and I'm gonna do a scant quarter inch seam allowance right now. Probably get some wrinkles in my sleeve because this isn't the, the seam line. Did I unthread my needle? It felt like it, oh my God. That's because I manually trimmed those shorter. So annoying. I just can't see the eye. That's why it's so hard to do this on camera. There we go. Oh boy, I almost lost it again. You know the trick? This is probably something you all know really, really well, but just for that one person out there who doesn't, do you, if you're, a, especially if you're a beginning sewist or you have a new machine to you or something and you're just kind of getting used to it, nine times out of 10, the reason you unthread your needle when you start to sew is because your thread take-up lever is down when you left it last, right? So I'll always make sure this thread take-up le lever is at the top of your machine when you finish your seam so that when you go to sew it and with this is all the way down that thread now is like short right and so as soon as the thread take up letter goes up it yanks it out of the needle you know so you know that's my little when I figured that out when I was a new sewist it was a game changer for me <laughs> I was like oh I mean once I realized the logic behind it I was like oh yeah yeah that makes sense and I just watched it happening, and I think I, I caught someone say something to that effect, and I was like, oh, wait, what did they just talk about? You know what I mean? Because um, we didn't have to Google. So Back when I learned to sew, we didn't have to Google. So you see all these little um, gathers in here. Let's, let's evenly distribute them. This seems like a lot of freaking ease, man. Who drafted this? That was me. It's not them. It's me. So on my line right here, I don't actually have any wrinkles. It's close, but I don't. But see right here, this all this ruffled edge? That's a lot. It's a way to be kind to future you. Yeah, so yeah, anytime you finish sewing, see my machine, um, my machine stops in a way that always leaves the thread take-up lever at the top always because I have this auto thread clip thing going on, right? 
every time I stop my machine mid sewing, it stops with a needle down so that I, I'm very accurate. But a home machine, unless you press a button sometimes, it doesn't have that feature. Um, some of them do, uh, but they're kind of higher end machines nowadays. So yeah, anytime you finish, always uh, walk your needle, and, uh, and by that I mean um, turn your hand wheel toward you, always toward you, never away from you, no matter what you're doing. Unless you're a little stuck, then you're gonna probably have to jiggle it a little bit, like if you've got like a thread vomit thing happening. But um, yeah, so just walk your needle towards you until your thread take up lever is up at the top. And there is kind of a false top, but you'll know what I mean. So yeah, that's that'll help prevent it from unthreading itself. That kind of stuff would, you know, like you're sitting there, you're tired, you're trying to get that project done and um, you've got everything arranged. You're like holding it all together. You've got your foot on the table and your elbow and you're holding it down and then it unthreads itself and you're just like, that's it you just start crying and you want to throw your machine across the room. Yeah, I've been there. I know what you're talking about. So yeah, those little little helpful hints are kind of nice. All right, so yeah, you see my line right here. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to pull my camera way down. It's going to be in front of me for a second. So see that? Look at all the, the ruffle there. And this is smooth. But my line right here doesn't really have gathers in it almost they almost do like right about here and stuff I may have to shift a little towards that way but hopefully not it was designed to be able to fit through here I have the max amount of ease in there so but when you're doing a French seam I'm gonna sew over all this ruffle stuff right because here's my my seam line my half inch seam allowance here is where I'm starting my French seam. So when I do this, I'm going to mash down all these ruffles a little bit and it kind of feels counter how you want this to go. Hi, Liza. <laughs> so, um, so it seems like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm like embedding all these ruffles into this and I don't want these gathers. I want it to be smooth, but, um, I, I feel like it's good to know, um, I've been to the future and I can tell you that in a way when you actually mash these down and sew it and then you go back to do your last seam on your French seam, this right here can't change much between when you sew this and, and when you get to sewing your last seam. So you're actually, it's the easiest way to do a sleeve in a way what, that has a lot of ease in it. I know that sounds weird. But it's kind of true. It kind of stabilizes your um, sleeve seam there. And if you have as many gathers as you have in yours as I do in mine, it's kind of nice that once you get to this second seam, your final French seam, that all of that has been stabilized and it's not going to move around. So kind of just spend your time arranging it. And yes, I am going to have a lot of tucks. I'm moving machinery. Sorry, guys. Really, Sherry? You've never had the machine, uh, your machine probably automatically stops like that then. Because there are some that do that. All right, so yeah, I have all these little gathers. Using my all kind of helps. I might have to move a little bit of this towards the sleeve. To the other side of the sleeve, sorry. I can see my daughter texting me. I'm like, what is she texting me about? Now remember, the pattern doesn't come with this much ease in it. I added a lot. I got gushy arms. All right, so we'll get rid of this, these uh, pins. So yeah, look at that. Here's my seam line. That's what I just sewed. So yeah, it's not done yet, right? Let's get this nice and flat. Um, I don't have a free arm on my machine. I mention this um, every time I'm doing something like that. So that's why I'm sewing on the inside of the sleeve. Always sew on the sleeve side of your garment when you're putting in a sleeve. Do not sew on the other side. It's a lot harder to do and you have a lot less control because the armhole is relatively straight. I mean, yeah, it's curved at the bottom, but you're not worried about that. But the armhole going across, you know, over your shoulder, that's kind of straight. You know what I mean? But the sleeve cap is not. And that's what you need to work on. Usually working on the curved piece uh, facing up makes it a little bit easier to manipulate. 
All right, so let's get this evenly distributed. I want as much towards my cap as possible because then it'll make it nicer. This side has a lot less, so this is nice. Probably could have done a better job of distributing the gathers when I drafted it. It could be um, maybe their back armhole is shorter. I don't know. With that much ease in the sleeve, it's not going to matter. It's going to feel good. And this, I love the way this sleeve fits on my scout that I've already made. All right, now back stitch. That's not a basting stitch that you just sewed, so make sure you back stitch. All right, and so um, now we're going to, well, let's press the seam. You always just hold your thread. Yeah, that's the, you can totally do that. Yeah, and the other, the other tip is take this little thread tail and put it behind, like through the presser foot and behind. And then when you put your presser foot down, that might help if, you're, if your thread take-up lever is anywhere, you know, close to being up. I can't even see mine right now, but it's nice and tight. I can feel it when I did that. All right. Did I put it on there? And I didn't. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. Probably could have done the other one as well before we came over here, but um, I'll do the other one a little faster. We'll just go through the step by step of doing a French seam. Here's my gathering stitch. I'll eventually probably remove it because it's just something I enjoy doing. I'm gonna try and iron this kind of like I sewed it by putting it like with a circle like this, you know? feels really weird like it it looks weird it feels weird it feels like it's not going well but it is actually going well so whatever the heck that is. oh that's my notch that's why there's a little rot thing there kind of slide it in my fingers to get right on the edge there best I can um, I have accidentally skipped this step probably not I can't really say accidentally but I just kind of was like eh, it's fine and I didn't iron this part and it actually is a little easier if you iron it, even though it does look weird. Just kind of makes it hold itself a little bit better. I think the other thing you could do is maybe set yourself up with a bigger seam allowance. Uh, that can make it a little bit easier. Give yourself some room to trim. Is that too noisy for you guys? I can go shut my door. <laughs> yeah, way more gush than me. <laughs> I've got those, um, I used to chuck hay bales arms, and I chucked hay bales in my 20s, so that's, my arm has stayed that way, <laughs> even if it's not all muscle. <laughs> all right, so here's my gathering stitch right here, and you can see, like, there aren't gathers in there. It looks like it, but there's not. kind of is right here. You can kind of move that a little bit. Especially on this side, I think this is the side I have more. So then now let's let's start sewing and then we'll kind of manipulate it as we go. Try and get this nice and flat. And remember this seam right here is lining up on that seam, so make sure it is still. It is right here, but remember now we're talking about the seam line right there. Let's try and get that on there.
Try not to stretch it out. This fabric's pretty lightweight, so it kind of wants to be stretched out by accident. All right, so we'll get up there. And you can feel, like I can feel my, um, the gathering stitch is really taut right there. So I'm gonna go, go just to the left of my gathering stitch there. Just to the left. As long as that's the seam allowance. Like right there, I'm a little wiggly. And see, I feel like also doing this, I'm kind of picking this up and kind of curving it around it like this. And it kind of helps like this. Because now remember, now all I need to do is sew this seam. I'm not holding anything. I don't need pins or anything like that. I just need to make sure that that little, little basting stitch is inside the seam allowance so it won't show on the outside. That's the only thing I have. I don't know what, what's going on there. I think I have a little thread pulling. There we go. I feel like I may have a little bit of my raw edge sticking out on the other side. It was really hard to feel it. All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna pull out my uh, basting thread too. I wish I would have taken note on which side it is because I don't think it's that one. So let's just look at the other side and see how I did. Oh yeah, see there's some of my threads right there. Let me get rid of that. Oh, I got a lot of thread right there. All right, so let's do a little bigger seam allowance. I'm gonna trim that. I forgot to trim it. <laughs> I forgot to trim it. All right, so let's pull the basting stitch out. Came right out. Let's pull the other side. So now that's not in there, it kind of releases it a little bit. I forgot to trim it, I'm so focused on it. This is always dangerous doing it afterward, I don't wanna cut my blouse. You know what I mean, jelly beans? It's like I traded one task for the other, I'm like, I've definitely not ironed every time. So that meant I skipped doing the trimming. Come on, scissors. Oof, I almost got the shirt there. Shoot, I wish I would have trimmed that because it went really good. Let's get rid of all that and then um, I'm gonna sew it again. I'll make sure I can get rid of as much as possible. So here you go, here's your lesson. Don't forget to trim it. <laughs> get rid of all that thread and, and rough edge. Um, that way you don't have to worry. Just means my next one's gonna be really nice, right? All right, let me uh, but I think that actually looks really good, except for that my rod showing. And look at how narrow I am right there. No wonder, you know. Ah, Karen, you know I have a video on that. Yay, I have a video you want. <laughs> yeah, if you search uh, how to cut bias, um, and then I show you either, I might actually show you how to join the bias strips in the how to sew at the very beginning. They're both pretty short. The um, how to cut bias, I think is like a 10 minute video, so you can kind of skim through there. And I'm pretty sure yeah, I'm pretty sure that one doesn't have any sewing on it because it's probably just at my table. Yeah, continuous bias is another way to do it. I don't have a video on that. I don't do it that way. I end up just sewing it all together because I, I've used to cutting out so much. Look at that. 
and then your seam allowance always gets pressed towards the sleeve cap and it kind of helps fill in this little bit of extra but I you can see I have these little tuck or these little like ruffles but there's no tuck in there well there's one right there but that's okay we can press that out I mean look at that it's pretty good and you can see now you see my sleeve kind of goes you see that little curve I'm getting right there that's good. That's a good sign. You want your sleeve to do that. So. Oh, man, my shoulder is so sore or something. Sitting and sewing too much. All right, so now let's do our other sleeve. Here's this. Let's pull it a little bit more. And this time I'm going to tell myself that what side, I'm going to say out loud, like which side I'm pulling on, you know. And I am pulling on the inside of the sleeve, that thread. That way I know which one to grab when I go to remove it. <laughs> I don't pull the other one by accident first because then it would lock it up and it would be there forever. All right. Put this wrong side out, line it up, and then put the seam allowance of the sleeve towards the front so that the seam allowance of the bodice, bodice can go towards the back. We won't remember to trim, or won't forget to trim. Did you guys catch at the beginning of my... Um, <laughs> The PDF video that I said I'm gonna help try and make this as like less painless for you <laughs> you guys I recorded that video so many times I had the silliest things happen it's so annoying when I have those little weird things happen one of them was that uh, lately I've been not turning off the auto exposure because I'm like oh it looks fine I'll just leave it on and then like I'll start recording. It only happens when I'm recording. It doesn't happen when I'm live. It'll all of a sudden get dark. And it's probably because I did something and then it makes the auto exposure kick in. And so I did that and I had to re-record. Then the other time I got all the way to the end I realized, oh, my camera window is over all the things I'm trying to show you in my on my computer screen. Like, oh my gosh try to throw together something and it never happens and I feel like you know like the more you record it you start remembering more and more things to include but you also start forgetting things you want to include and that was definitely the case like I forgot a couple of things I was like oh <sighs> try to be helpful yeah you kind of make a square you pick it up and um I've seen a lot of people do do tutorials on that, but um, you have to cut. Here's the rub with that. It is a continuous method, but you have to cut a single layer of bias. So for me, if I'm doing 30 yards of bias, like I'm cutting a whole yard of fabric up, I'm not going to do that. I'd much rather just sew the ends together real quick than cut, like sit there and cut with my scissors too, you know. <clears throat> But it's magical. It's such a magical method. Terry is absolutely right. It's so cool. I used to do that a long time ago, and now I don't have my little, like, cheat sheet. I had this little cheat sheet as a piece of paper. So that's the thing. Like, when if you guys are doing that method, I found it easier to remember how to do it by tracing it on a piece of paper and then folding the paper and then writing on the piece of paper the steps. So I always had that little handy dandy cheat sheet, you know? Why is this one so easy to get in there? Look at that. Suspicious. Yeah, it's good for a tiny bit, but if it's just for an, a neckline, you only, you can just cut that. You really don't need much. All right, so we've got most of my gathers up there at the cap. The gushiest bit. All right. 
All right, so we got it wrong sides together. I'm going to start with the underarm. these like pull these these uh, basting threads just kind of keep those out in the seam allowance don't sew over them if you don't have to I mean you'll have to right here but it's better not to like <clears throat> get them in your way maybe I actually should keep them this way this is what I mean to do keep them towards the garment that one's kind of in between the seam Keep that raw edge lined up. Don't get your seam allowance off. It gets it doesn't make it easier. It will it actually does make it easier, but it doesn't make it correct because if you let the cap um, slip one way or the other to find like to so that it's finding the easiest place, that doesn't put your seam in the right spot. So keep your raw edges lined up. Don't cheat. Yeah, nice for slippery. That's cool, yeah. Do bias bind next version of tank top bias binding instead of what do they call it, bias facing. Oh, so you're going to do the binding on the edge then rather like so that it's visible to the outside? That'll be cute. Just make make sure you use a, if you're using their pattern piece, just make sure it's wide enough. Cuz you can see like the binding they give you for this is pretty narrow. So an inch, because that's a bias facing, goes on the inside. But if you need it to straddle the edge and be visible on like the outside and the inside, you need a little bit more width. Unless you want a really narrow binding, piece of binding. Okay. Now we trim, just trim this down, a little less than your seam allowance. I'm going to try and do a fat quarter on my next pass, so I want this to be like a scant quarter. Does anyone here use the uh, closed captions? I want to make sure they're working properly for people. I imagine I say some words that the closed captioning can't pick up. This is better on a table, like lay it on the table, maybe use a rotary knife or just be really careful you're not getting your garment. All right, let me iron it. Okay, I'll put the sleeve inside. Like this. Like that. I'm trying to, it's like fiddly. It wants to grab itself. Putting it wrong side or right sides together. Right? Yeah, the right sides together. The embroidery kind of grabs it, each other. Oh, shoot. There's all these pins over there. All right. Has anyone seen if uh, Soda Fit's been live lately? I was thinking about her. Hoping she's uh, doing good.
So what are we gonna do for Me Made May, you guys? I think I wanna do a week on <clears throat> mending and touching up all of our Me Maids, you know? Like sometimes I'll see like, oh, I didn't catch that hem very good, or oh, I have a little hole in that now. You know, like caring for them and doing some mending and stuff. Taking care of them so they last a while. I think it's funny, like I wear my jeans a few days in a row and um, they're so comfortable, but they're a little not flattering by the like third day. <laughs> that when I get a new pair, I'm like, oh, yay. And then I'm like, oh my God, these are so freaking tight. You know? Okay. <laughs> soda fit <laughs> that's kind of cute <laughs> you have oh yeah you don't usually have okay that's great still nothing from her hmm I'm gonna reach out to her all right we trimmed it. Let's hope that stayed nice and trimmed. And um, so our last seam. Remember you're gonna line up that underarm there. What? Wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh, you guys. Do you guys just realize what I just did? I just did the wrong sleeve. This might give me the giggles, sorry. <laughs> I just ironed the wrong one and I just sewed the wrong one. <laughs> but see, this is the type of thing that you tell people when they say something like, you know, I never make mistakes. Oh yeah, she does. Why is this so hard to get out? See? I was like, why does it feel like there's already a seam in there? There there was. My goodness. All right, I may have to get this out later. Oh, I got it. Wait, I'm scared. I'm scared I'm going to hurt my fabric right there. Oh my gosh. Okay, I might wait on that. All right. <laughs> oh no, Sherry, that is the worst. When your drapes aren't, uh, oh, I have had that happen. What the heck? I'm blaming this on you guys. Oh my God, I mean, I was wondering, it felt, yeah. You know, anytime you're like wondering, trust your instincts. I was thinking that was a little harder to iron. Funnily, I, it's kind of, you know, the fact that it was harder to iron is kind of funny. Oh, sigh. I keep thinking I'm hearing a cow mooing out there, but I think it's a weed whacker. And I'm like, oh, I miss hearing cows moo. These don't bug me when they're way over here, but they really bug me when they're right there. All right. Yeah, I was thinking about like, okay, we'll do like a, maybe a mending thing like, or fixing problems. Like, okay, like one of my pants, I don't like the where the tack button is. 
And so I can't just pick up that tack button and move it because it'll leave a hole in the jeans where that tack button was. So like, how would I repair that? So I was thinking about doing that or putting a whole new waistband on. Um, I saw my uh, neckline pulling out of a collar stand area once because of the, like, the yoke got caught, but the um, other one didn't. Things like that. Like little things like you think are fine and then after you've washed them a few times, you know, I think partly it's because, you know, I am going a little faster maybe than I would and I'm a little bit trying to watch, read the chat and I just make mistakes in general, you know. I just, you know, because we all do. <laughs> Eclectic, exactly. <laughs> I wonder, Sherry, could you do it? If you hand him, could you just do it while they're still hanging up? All right, let's do this. It's totally bugging me that I didn't pull out the ha that whole pull all out that little error right now. It's like those kinds of things, they sit there and they just sit there yelling at me in my head until I take care of it. Um, it's why I don't understand how some folks can forget to do something like, the, uh, like, um, say I set my water glass down somewhere weird. And I'm like, you set your water glass down somewhere weird, like in my dresser, in my closet or my, you know, I never think this with my eyeglasses, of course. And, um, it'll kind of bug me until I go get it. Yeah, so when you're putting in, I feel like putting in a set-in sleeve with ease, if you do it with a French seam, it's easier. I, I, I'm just going to say it. I really feel like it because as long as you can get that, um, you know, it looks pretty good when you go to pin it and you put in that first basting stitch and maybe you're, and you're like stitching down all those little ruffles, those gathers, um, I really feel like it's going to be okay then because you've just taken out the trickiest bit of navigation. You can kind of get rid of that, you know, the gathers are like fixed then. All right. So I, I put my sleeve gather and was it the wrong side? Yeah. All right. So take that out. <clears throat> I like taking it out. You don't have to. I feel like it relaxes it though. And um, I also then I don't run the risk of the, the thread showing on the right side. So I still have a few threads on the right side. But not bad. They're just the threads now. Not that frayed edge. I think I saw a little bit of frayed edge right there. Let's get rid of these threads. Pulling them is sometimes a little bit nerve wracking because you might pull a um, thread from the fabric and you'll leave a hole in your fabric. Yeah, Sherry, that's what, one of my pet peeves one time. I was making sheer, like chiffon sheer drapes and they didn't cut the fabric on the grain and they all hung at an angle. Because all I did was I um, I was doing it really quick and I needed them pretty badly. And so all I did was cut a length, left the selvages on the side, hemmed the top and bottom, you know, made a, a rod pocket for the top and then hemmed the bottom. And then um, they hung like this at an angle. <laughs> so, yeah. I had to go buy more, a lot more. All right, there we go. Pretty cute. What's the hem on this? I can't remember. All right, so now we're gonna do our bias binding on the um, neckline. And um, I probably do this a little different than they do. Uh, they probably sew their piece in a circle and I don't do that. Um, I'm just gonna fold it back on itself and then um, sew it down like I always do all my binding. I don't really think you have to have it in a circle. So I need to turn my blouse wrong side out. I always start at my shoulders. I 
I'm gonna put this little tail folded back like that, you know, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna, um, this is the back neckline right here, and that's my shoulder. I'm just gonna start just a little past my shoulder so it's not like adding this extra bit of thickness. So this bias facing goes to the inside of the garment. And these can be a little bit finicky. I don't know where my center back is actually. I just pinned that there and I didn't even check it. Oops. I think I'll just wait until I do my last stitch. So these can be a little bit finicky um, and I, I kind of don't recommend pulling your binding when you're doing this because um, uh, like I always say, like so this binding right here, the, where it's going to end up being stitched down on the body, this edge is going to be a little shorter than that. So you kind of want it to be as big as possible. You also don't want it to draw up along your neckline and then have torquing when you go to stitch down the binding. Um, you'll just see the little torque lines on the outside. Um, the other thing is make sure your binding, whatever you're using, like if you're using a contrast piece of fabric, make sure it's pre-washed because it'll shrink a little differently than your garment because it's gonna be sewn to a different grain line. Just trying to keep this all nice and relaxed. Oof. I am barely gonna have enough, what the heck? I thought there was like a little extra in this. I guess it's not a binding finish on the um, sleeves, huh? So maybe, you know, like I, I turned down about a fat three quarters of an inch there. It's gonna be just the right amount. So then I, when I come to this, I just lay it down flush. It looks like I planned that, look at that. It worked out perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet that fabric is lovely, Sherry. And in, you know, if it's bugging you, it's bugging you. you, you fix it, you know, like certain things you just, I don't let fly either. All right, now I'm gonna um, notch my neckline with these scissors that are challenging me. I bought new scissors and I'm getting them probably today. And I ended up getting something called, what were they? I'll sh you're gonna start seeing me, sh if I like them, I'm hoping that I like them. Um, you'll start seeing me use them and I'll tell you what they are. I can't remember what the name they have. They're they have like a person's name. They have these big holes for the fingers. They have you make a, yeah, so I don't, um, but you can do that. You can see how mine looks to see if that's what you like. It's to the inside of the garment, so I don't see the point in that. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because sometimes when, um, you're kind of not used to sewing binding like that and you're putting it in a circle, it can get a little messy right there because of trying to line it up and depending on your fabric and stuff and the start and stops of the thread bulk, especially, you know, seaming it together. I've gotten it, it just looks worse, you know? So, all right, let me press this. gonna press it kind of up first now I have nor normally probably would have um, skipped pressing and then gone straight to the under stitching but I have to say like it's better if you press it before you under stitch it you need to clip the neckline if you were just sewing the binding to the edge and it was like, ooh, how do I, see? yeah. So if you were just binding the edge like this and the binding was showing like that, you don't have to clip your neckline. The only reason we have to clip it is because when we turn it to the inside, 
these little edges have to spread out because this edge right here is long or shorter than what it's sewing to right there. It's just logic. But if you're just if your binding is showing and it stays on the edge of the garment, you do not have to clip the curve. It doesn't matter because the shirt is not bending back on itself. And I wouldn't clip it because you might see those little clips through your binding. So just leave it. You're not being like extra by by doing that. I'm gonna press this to the inside now. I think having an ironing board right now would be nice. <laughs> Mine's in the closet. Okay, see, look at that. It doesn't really want to lay flat. This is probably gonna give me a lot of trouble to be honest. Not looking forward to that. I have some ideas on how to combat that, but it's this is kind of. Um, I just don't think this is honestly, personally, I just don't think this is a good finish for a um, neckline. It's really hard to do, and I'm saying that, and I love binding, but I do feel like this is really hard and. This reminds me that someone asked me on Instagram on how to make a facing. So um, I'll show you how to do that. Because you don't have to do binding. I just, I don't really like it as a finish for a neckline. I like the way it looks if it comes out, but it doesn't usually <laughs> come out. <laughs> and in some ways, leaving my tail like this helps because look, it can spread out right there. All right. I uh, failed to do this on one of the garments and I had to come up with a different way. Okay, where did I do with that pattern piece? Still over here? It is, okay, cool. Okay. So, um, it looks great right now, right? Like it looks like it's gonna work, but I'm gonna tell you, it's, it's probably not gonna. <laughs> it did on my other one and I think it's cause that fabric was so interesting. Like it kind of, had some more give to it or something. I don't really know how to put it because I was doing it such, to such a lightweight thing. So one thing you could do is put, take your binding, um, add like another couple inches to that piece they give you and cut it so that you have a front piece and a back piece. Don't cut it in half because the back's probably a little longer than the front or shorter than the front. So you want to kind of evenly distribute it because look at the way I sew it like this where I don't attach it to itself if that were attached to itself, it wouldn't be able to spread apart right here and give you a little more ease. And if you got have that front and back, you might, or side to side, you might have a little bit of extra room. So um, getting this to lay flat in here, I'm gonna understitch it, but that's not the issue. I don't have to understitch it. Look at this. You can already see it won't do it. See, so it's it's gonna, if I stitch it down, maybe, maybe because if it's turned under, maybe it'll work. Narrower is better. Narrower is your friend in this. And it's because um, the closer you can stay to this original edge, the better. So yeah, maybe making it as narrow as possible, I'll be able to do it. Um, I'll also edge stitch just because I like the way that looks. But um, if you want to do a facing, get your pattern pieces out and um, you're going to trace about a two to two and a half inch line exactly parallel to your curved edge here of your neckline. And then you will just sew it to the neckline with the same seam allowance, clip the curve, turn your facings to the inside and press down. You don't have to sew um, the facing to the garment unless you want to, if you want like a stitch around the neckline right there, holding it down, that's fine. Or you can stitch in the ditch, 
pull your shoulder apart and stitch right there or even hand tack it to the seam allowance, the facing, and it'll stay on the inside. So just don't over interface it, like make it too boardy, but definitely give it some body. You don't want it to get too wrinkly, um, like when you wash it and stuff, and because it's kind of a pain. I think facings are totally appropriate way. They seem kind of old fashioned, but they actually work really good. All right, so let's see how I do. Oh, let me do my understitching. So all the seam allowance is pressed toward the binding. It's so thin I can barely feel it. This fabric is so thin. Okay. Um, I don't really feel like understitching is completely necessary, but it is kind of nice. Um, if you are stitching down your binding to the neckline, it's probably not going to creep out to the other side. And that understitching is really to help make it so that your binding or whatever you're understitching, like if you, you know, so facing there, you definitely gonna want to understitch the facing. Um, you don't want the facing, like this little edge, this little, the facing, pretending like this is facing and not a binding. You don't want that to sneak to the outside, right? That little edge. And that clipping that curve and understitching the facing helps prevent that. Making sure when you draft that facing pattern that it is perfectly parallel, exactly the same neckline. I mean, if you don't want your pattern anymore, just cut it off if you want. Oh, interesting, Ray. I have never thought about that. So you put the... So, is only one shoulder then at a right angle or both? All right. And you could bind the edge of your facing if your fabric's not too thin and it that little ridge wouldn't show through, you know. All right, so I'm going to turn this under. I'm just going to turn it right around the, the seam allowance I already have sewn there. Now I sewed this at a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm I don't not sure. I should probably you um I just said the opposite. What did what I say? What did I say this opposite? Sorry, I don't want to be confusing. Uh, I should have checked the seam allowance though. I'm hoping it wasn't a half inch. That would be kind of crazy that you would have to trim off a quarter because your facing is yeah. It, I'm sure it's a quarter inch. So now trying to keep the entire facing to the inside of the garment. Don't let it creep to the outside. It'll, it's going to want to sometimes, so just keep it nice and flat. And just wrap that seam allowance down. I like to see a little bit so I know if I'm going to get into trouble. Yeah, I think this is going to be okay because it's narrow enough. If you used wider binding, you're probably going to have a lot of trouble getting this to lay flat without pulling or distorting the outer shell, the bodice. We're almost done. I need to do some sleeve hems, which I can't remember <laughs> what we said we'd do. I can't remember at all. You saw Louise cutting do it. I'd say the piecing still has to happen. Piecing? Yeah, so if you do the facing, you have a front facing and a back facing. You sew, sew the shoulder seams together, right sides together, and then you attach it to the neckline, right sides together, understitch it. Um, you would have had to finish the perimeter of the facing, the long edge that goes around, but you can do that by serging, binding, or zigzag. Oh, oh okay. Oh, the facing should be parallel to the garment piece. The facing, um, 
when you're tracing the edge of the facing, when you're making the pattern. So that went pretty good. You can see I have a little bit of bumps there. Looks pretty good. So yeah, when you're tracing your facing, if you want to make a pattern piece, you're going to just trace about a two, two and a half inch line away from the raw edge of the pattern piece right there. And you do a front facing and a back facing and you'll, the seam allowance for the shoulders there because it's, it's on the pattern piece. So yeah, you just take your pattern piece. I don't have a, and you're just going to draw a two inch line like this. I say two to two and a half inches. If this is a quarter inch seam, a finished facing of about two inches is pretty good. Um, I think it's if it's wider, it's better. It's going to stay to the inside of your garment and not flip out. Uh, the place it's going to most easily, most likely flip out is right here at the center front. So you really want to make sure you do not like. I actually would make sure that you open out the pattern piece. Don't do it on the fold. Because if you get this fold at all a little bit um, off right here and your facing is a little smaller or bigger, you're going to have problems with the facing. It's going to act funny. So just make sure you're, it's identical. So yeah, there's your facing piece. You cut that off. Um, you can allow a seam allowance for a hem, a binding. Binding doesn't need a seam allowance, but you know, just depends on what you want. Cut the front out, cut the back out, interface both. Sew the shoulder seams together, right sides together, and then sew it to the neckline just like we did with the binding. And then um, you're done, pretty much. As long as you have the, um, and you can use the same seam allowance, the same grain line as the garment. That should work. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the sleeve hem. I think I'm just gonna do a rolled hem. Just gonna do a little rolled hem here. Oof, look at all these threads though. Remember that, like underarm seam being on the bias and there was no fraying, that was so nice. <laughs> I try and keep it relaxed because these little curved hems can be kind of problematic. They can act really funny. If you want, guys want any further explanation on drafting facing, just let me know. I know I'm kind of throwing it at you in a really bite-sized format. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you don't have to do binding if you really don't like it. Maybe you just want a different look or a finish. Maybe you just want to try it. Um, there's a lot of reasons. But I would definitely stick to your binding being on the narrower side rather than the wider side. That's where I tend to get into trouble is the binding I use by default that I have around here in my shop is three eighths of an inch wider than the binding they use for the pattern piece. If you stick to their pattern piece, you're gonna have a much easier time sewing it than if you use something wider. I got a little bit of... I think that binding these sleeve hems would be a good idea. So my idea to make this top longer if it's too short is to um, make a pleat at the bottom. Get rid of some of these threads here. Okay, cool, Sherry, thanks. Yeah, I knew someone had asked and, uh, you know, some people just don't like using doing binding and that's totally fine. Sometimes people don't want a stitching line right there at the neck as well, like uh, this one right here, where I finished, you know, the last edge of the binding and um, they don't want that look. You know, like say you were doing a satin charmeuse scout tee, that would be beautiful, right? And it would make it so classy 
You could actually wear a nice pair of slacks and hand it sweater or a little, you know, jacket you made or bought over that and you would have a nice little classy outfit. But maybe you don't want a stitch line right there on your satin charmeuse top, you know. A facing would be a really appropriate way to fix that. But, you know, they're going for that t-shirt look, so the binding does kind of give it like a little more of a sporty look. All right, so this is what I'm thinking. Like, say my shirt ends up being a little too short, and I actually don't think it is. This was my idea, is that I would take another piece of this fabric and probably like the solid here with no, no um, uh, embroidery on it, and I would, let's see if I can mimic it. Like, say this is a separate piece of fabric right here. I would do this hang it out from under there like that, like a little pleat to make it longer, you know? And I think like what you could do is I could overlock the edge or not, or just finish it somehow. And then um, I would fold this up, attach my folded pleat to this edge and then top stitch it all down, you know? All right, I'm gonna do a rolled hem on this so I stay away from my embroidery. Look at all those threads. I bet you can't even see them, but there's a ton. <laughs> kind of, you know, forced them into my sleeve him, but that was a little too much. I feel like I'm creating more. <laughs> or I just keep discovering them. They, they're so lightweight. Oh, they're everywhere. All right. Oh, I forgot my uh, label. Dag nab it. I'm gonna put it in there so I can see easily see the back of my garment when I go to wear it. I need a lot of hand folding holding putting on my clothes, not backwards. I tell you, man. Yeah, you could, Eliza. Yeah, I've seen that done. In fact, I almost did that on my first scout. You know, I think it's really cute. Lexi from Hearts Fabric, if you probably had to scroll way back in their feed, she has one and it's really cute. There we go. The label lays so much flatter if I don't put it in the seam. It's a pretty thick label because of all these colors. There we go. Still have that one spot that I didn't. Yeah, here it is. Jerk. I've got like a little ball of thread there. Look at that thing. Oof. I'm scared. Oh, okay, it's done. Ha! Huh, I didn't have to pull anything out. Phew! <laughs> Get my sleeve him. There we go. <laughs> ah, thanks, Claire. <laughs> How would I deal with the rajas of the scallop, Eliza? You know, I would actually make a facing. So say, um, okay, the tricky part about doing a scallop. Have I done a scallop with you guys before? Where did I do a scallop? I don't even remember. The tricky part about doing a scallop is... Um, if how you deal with the side seams. So, you know, if you space your scallop so that they end where it'd be continuous, that's kind of the tricky part about a scallop when you're planning it. But just do your scallop and then make a facing, just like I described on how to do the neckline, identical to that. And then I would stitch it down. So just sew your scallop edge, clip the curves, 
clip into the um, upswing of the scallop right there. And then um, turn it, press the heck out of it, um, make it sure it's nice and flat and top stitch it down. Either roll the uh, facing edge, you know, clean finish or serge it and top stitch it down. So, yeah. No, I'd love to do that. I think that'd be really cute, Eliza. Really cute. And, and uh, Lexi's done it. If you Maybe if you look at the Scout Tea hashtag, you'll probably see other people have done it. I had the idea to do it to mine, and I was like, oh, I wonder if anyone's done that. And then when I saw Lexi's, I was like, oh, I got the idea from her. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure that's why I um, came up with the idea. It wasn't even my idea. I just saw other people had done it already. And it looked really cute. All right, I'm just roll hemming. Trying to keep it away from my embroidery edge there. Is this the back? This is the front because there's no darts. Yeah, okay. Kind of do it in little bite sizes like that. When you get to these little curves, just kind of gently try and keep it about the same. You can iron this first <laughs> if you want. Oof. I'm a little closer to my my uh, scallop at my uh, embroidery on this side. I want it to be symmetrical. <laughs> the embroidery. Oh, I see what you mean, Eliza. Could I do a um, scalloped edge on this one? Um, I could. I think you'd have to hand sew it. I mean, the other thing is, like, I don't actually, I could just um, cut it right there. Technically, it's finished. That is a zigzag. I could just cut it right there. It, you know, the thing to do, I think, would be to test it out. I have plenty of fabric. You know, I could um, cut along that little scallop edge and then just on a piece of fabric and then safety pin it to something in my laundry and wash it a few times and see how it does. You know? But yeah. No, we talked about that during cutting it, Eliza. I think that's a, that would be really cute. This is such a lightweight top. I feel like I could have maybe come up with a nicer finish for the hem. done. That's cute. some of those threads. That looks a little flared from me uh, really getting that rolled him in there nice.
Plus, um, that's actually not for me doing that. If anything, I should have drawn it up. It's because the embroidery draws in the fabric right there. That's why it's doing that. We kind of saw it when I was cutting it. Forgot about that. Excited to try this on. I think it's really cute. I feel like most of Green Line's patterns are kind of the same silhouette. <laughs> but it does make uh, <clears throat> fitting them consistent once you figure out what works for you, which is kind of nice. It's so mix and match, right? What do you think of how I did that? Like, it's okay, huh? I didn't really have much choice of where this lands. I probably, if I would have done this lower, I would have just had more blue below the embroidery. So that's an option. There's a lot of threads on there right now. Alright. What is that? Oh. Ooh, you want me to put on my dress form? We could do that. Let's see. That's that camera. Um. Yeah, just a second. I gotta. I don't want to make you guys sick by moving the camera because I have to like swivel it so hard. All right, now rotate this right. Oh boy! I love how you guys think I'm techie. Bring the mouse. Let's see how I did. Wait, where is it? Where is it? Full. Where is it? Full screen. Oh, I didn't do too bad. I'm pointing the camera a little to the left. All right. Let's see. She doesn't have collapsible shoulders, so you gotta kinda do the shimmy shimmy cocoa pop on there. The fabric's really grabby on the dress form. Ooh, but that's pretty cute. <laughs> like, where's the camera? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I think that's gonna be pretty nice. Look at that. Nice little sleeve. The back looks really nice. I'm, I don't ever get to see like a, a shirt look so nice on the back on me. Very cute. There's the side seam. Side seam. Does it look like me? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think that turned out pretty cute. I wonder, let's make her the same height. All right, I'm not that short. So that would be like right here. That's good. Yeah, it's like a little chambray blue. It's pretty. I don't have to have a, a pair of pants to try this on for the photo. Thanks for reminding me I have a dress form. <laughs> oh, hey, Maribel. Yeah, me too. I think this is good. I love the fabric. The fabric, right, makes it. You can see it, like, I got this little, like, when I look at it like this, it looks fine. But when I see it in the camera, it looks like I'm like this. Uh, I don't think so, Eliza. Let's see. I don't have anything here. Um, but I don't think so. I did, I added the dart, you guys. I added the side dart and I added the back darts. But, um, Beverly, right? Or was it Barbara? I am so embarrassed that I always get you too confused. Um, uh, had the great idea of making it so, um, trying to make it so we didn't have to add darts at all and we cut it and cut it on the bias, which I think is like right here, right? And it didn't, it really didn't need the darts like it did in the woven without on the, being on the bias. And so you can look at the cutting video towards the end of the cutting video, you can see it cut on the bias with no darts, just the pattern as is and see. Yeah. Yeah, it's cute. I have enough for one more of these. Maybe I should make two. <laughs> Yay! Well, thanks guys. I'm probably not gonna cut another one out today. My shoulder and my neck are so sore from sewing so much that I think I probably should give it a break. I love the back of it, Eva. Like when I look at it in person, it looks so nice. It's skimming, it's not tight. Um, I think it looks really nice. You know, it has some shape back there. I'm pretty excited about that. You know, and putting the bus start in really helped. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm probably gonna make a couple more. I need some short sleeve shirts. <laughs> my hair, I didn't um, do my hair today. Like I did it, but I didn't straighten it or curl it. This is my natural wavy mess. It's really bright over here. Sorry, it's so bright. Let me see if I can tone that down a little bit. There we go. It's a little less, a little better. <laughs> cool. So I haven't even decided. Oh my gosh. I haven't even decided what we're doing tomorrow. Well, shoot. Hi, Lisa. How's it going? Uh, this is the Beatrice dress form. So it's custom. It's me as a dress form. So I got scanned and everything and then they made it for me. It's awesome. I'm still kind of getting used to having it, but I love it. So, <sighs> all right, you guys, um, what do you guys want to do tomorrow? Could do another scout, uh, but I was thinking about, I really want to get the, the bag that you guys designed done. It's kind of one of my main uh, priorities right now. I don't know if I can finish the pattern today. Yeah, Eliza would be cute on you. This would be cute on you, Eliza. Yeah, and I think the pattern goes up to well, I cut out the 14, I think. This is the 12. I'm using the size 12. I wrote 14 there. I'm wrong. It's the size 12. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what it goes up to, though. Oh, it goes to 18. But you might look and see if they have curvy sizes now. 
they don't make these with collapsible shoulders, but it is a pretty soft foam. So it's not like a, a wolf form that is rigid. PGM, that sounds familiar. What's PGM? What's PGM? That sounds so familiar. Um, yeah, so that is like the few things you have to get, if you've ever used a real dress form, and I've used a lot of real dress forms, um, I even have a wolf dress form here, but that's the junior size, it's really small, and that's a very industry, high grade industry form, but mine's pretty old, I think it's from the 70s. Um, the, if you've ever used one of those, it does not feel like that, and you have to allow yourself to get used to that because the rigidness of those is really nice. It makes it really easy to drape, like pull something on and off. It's very smooth. I think what they do is they steam the fabric, the muslin onto the dress form itself. And I think it's like a heavy duty, kind of like a cardboard behind it, but a nice cardboard, you know, it's like a board behind it. Um, Cause if you look at the seams of a dress form like that, they are definitely, they are mashed down so mine doesn't, didn't come with this cover. This is the cover it comes with, and they give you a pattern. You can sew your own, but it only has a seam down the side. And I wanted seams on the princess lines right here. So I, I made waist seam. I made princess lines front and back. I made my shoulder seam, which is already there. And I also made my armhole. So I can kind of uh, have those guides when I'm using it as a fitting tool. There's my bobbin thread. Ooh, that was so satisfying. So I think another way you could relax your hip on something like this is put a vent right here on the side, you know, or the curve. So the stream bag. I know we need a good title for that. I've sewn in a sunroom, Terry. I mean, the sunshine, you know, you got to make sure you protect your fabric. If you're storing fabric in, in a sunny area, you need to uh, store, you know, store your fabric properly. Um, in fact, if you have your fabric folded, put all the selvage and, and cut edges out and the folded edges in and protect them because you don't want the fold to get um, faded. It doesn't take long. It can take a week. <laughs> Oh, it's an industry green. Okay, okay. Oh, that's awesome. It had leg sherry. I'm jealous of that. Very jealous of the legs. Um, um, the other thing is, um, yeah, the sun being in your eyes. So I think like being one of my personal favorite ways to sew in a next to a window is if, if this is the window right here and this is the wall is to put my machine perpendicular to it. So I'm never looking at it and I'm never, it's never behind me casting a shadow. And then you have this light that's kind of going right here or even putting it so that the window is on your left side since the head of the machine is open on this side, you can have the light coming that way. And sometimes putting your little machine, your table and your machine into the room saves you some wall space because we don't usually use the middle of the room. Anyway, I'm going to get going. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I may skip tomorrow and then stream Friday, Saturday. Would that be okay? Um, and maybe I could get the stream bag done so we can so we can stream Friday, Saturday, and I can get that done for you guys. I really want to get that done for you guys. Um, and then I'll also come up with um, some other things that we can get going too. I'm a, I think I'm going to see if I have enough fabric to make a scout tee out of this, my favorite fabric ever. So on the bias so yeah that's cool good for you sherry yeah i you know it's a lot of pressure doing a custom thing in a way i feel like i'm not allowed to change sizes <laughs> but i kind of scrapped that idea I'm like nope i'm gonna do whatever i want so cool well all right you guys i will see you soon um just Keep an eye out for me. Sorry I didn't make a plan for this week. I totally spaced it. I literally came in yesterday, went to my sewing machine, hooked up my audiobook, and started sewing. I didn't even turn on either of my computers, and I just sewed so that I could get it, and I, that worked. I guess got I got all of them done. I'm done now for a while. I have to 
because it turns out we're buying a house and so now I have to move. So I need to kind of tie some things up. <laughs> and I also want to, if you guys want to think about what you want to do for me, made May. So um, yeah, it's good seeing you too, Terry. If you guys want to throw out any ideas, um, I'm up for a sew along, but last year I feel like I did most of the sewing on that sew along. Um, and if you guys want to do maybe the mending idea, I've even thought about maybe doing like undergarments only. Yeah, no worries, Eliza. Yeah, of course, Angela. I know you guys are really hot to trot on, some of you are hot to trot on doing like bras and underwear. My only issue is that I still feel like my cover stitch isn't that great. So maybe if I can play around with that. <clears throat> um... But I think we should start doing some summer clothes for sure. So think about it. Think about a schedule. All right, you guys. I'll see you either tomorrow or Friday. And um, till then, have the sewing. And I'll see you guys soon. So.